Hi, I am Michael Kishu with Michael Kishu Studios. Uh, what I'm going to start doing is a series of videos on uh, taking a pen blank uh, all the way through the, the process to a finished pen. And I'm going to share some of the different techniques I use along the way. Um, some of these are not the techniques that others use. There's not a right way, there's not a wrong way, there's only a way that works for you. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, find what works for you, what doesn't. Stick with what works, you won't go wrong. Um, some of the techniques that I use are a little different from what has been traditionally used. Um, some may find them interesting, some may find them very helpful. So I'm going to show these processes as I go through the process, uh, go through the entire series. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you today is that when I start with a square blank or a straight out of the mold round blank, um, I go ahead and I round these blanks. Uh, the reason behind this is that, one, I want to get them down to a size that actually fits in my bullet chuck for some of the procedures I get through later, but also I want to see what's inside the blank. Um, in this particular case, this round one here, uh, you can see that when I poured this, I poured it in layers, but this is what the outside of the blank looks like. I have no idea what the inside looks like. Um, I believe I swirled this after I poured it, and that swirling doesn't show up on the outside of the blank. For a piece of wood, uh, this is a piece of uh, boxwood from St. Uh, Estate in the UK. Um, this may actually look very plain, uh, but inside, maybe uh, there may be some actual character in, involved. Um, this is especially important when you're working with some of the burl woods because you know what's happening at one inch out may be different from what's at, at half inch out. I take them down to about three quarters of an inch uh, so that I can see kind of what's going on, but I always know that these things are going to change the further and further that you turn them. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, what you see on the outside, it's not what you're going to see at a half inch pen blank, or uh, completed pen. So uh, what I'm going to show you now is, you can see I've already marked the end on one of these. I'm not going to just take a pen and a straight edge. Uh, you don't need anything fancy to do this. Um, the little squares that they sell specifically for this uh, do work wonderfully, uh, but you don't need them to be able to, to mark an end. Uh, simply take a straight edge. I'm using a popsicle stick here. Um, line it up between the two corners. Draw yourself a straight line. Other two corners. straight line. gives you a good approximation of where your center is. Uh, if you wanted to turn something slightly off center, this is the time that you would make that decision. <coughs> For a round one, obviously I can't line up any corners on this, so those little tools that they sell do come in very useful for this. I'm just going to approximate, eh, right about there is my center. Yeah, you'll see it better on this wide end. Right about there. Yeah, we're not we're not working with rocket science here, we're just making the pin, so it doesn't matter how how close we get unless you're intending to do something very specific. If you're working with a very fancy uh, Celtic knot pen blank, for example, uh, where the laminations are, are you know, very important, I highly recommend buying one of those little tools and using those. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I use to uh, start the hole, which I use a center drill. Uh, this one, I've just got it in my hand drill here. You can also use it in your drill press. Um, but these are a machinist tool. Uh, cost about a dollar or two dollars a piece. Uh, you can get them uh, Amazon, Lowe's should have them. Uh, pretty much anywhere will have them, um, hardware store wise. Uh, just look for center, uh, center bits. And you just start the hole, place it on your mark. And get it pretty lined up there. You're not trying to drill a, a deep hole. You're just wanting to get this second flute started here. Uh, so that whenever you start your real drill bit, it has a place that guides it. And also, for the next step that I'm going to do, which is turning the blank actually truly round, uh, the dead center and live center will go in these holes and be able to grip the blank easier. 
So again here, line up with your X. And those are marked and centered, center drilled. So the next step I'm going to show you, I've got my lathe set up here. And we're just going to turn this blank around. Now I've just got it between my collet chuck with a dead center in it and my live center. Uh, it's able to turn freely and if I were to get a catch on it, uh, the blank would stop and uh, no harm, no foul. Uh, would not cause excessive damage to anything if, if I were to get a catch with a chisel. Uh, as I'm turning between centers, uh, and it's not a spur center either, so it, it definitely does, you know, it stops when, it, the blank stops when you have an accident instead of destroying itself. Uh, so it is a slightly different technique, but I find it very, very useful. And we would proceed with that uh, that technique until we get the blank fully rounded. I'm actually going to stand around, step around to the back side of my leg here in just a second, and finish rounding these two blanks off using my. Uh, uh, it's a dedicated uh, duplicator that I that I mainly use for truing my blanks, getting them round, uh, and taking them down to close to finish size when I work on them. Um, other, uh, also use it for duplicating, obviously, but uh, I find that, that it has come in pretty handy. And this one I've modified with a, a uh, sliding feature instead of the cable-driven feature that it came with. Uh, so I'm going to turn my lathe back on and. Uh, We'll turn these two blanks around very quickly. did have a couple of places where the tool caught the blank. The blank stopped, the centers kept spinning, and there was no damage done to the blank. I'm going to round this acrylic blank that I poured. It's actually a uh, This should be turned pretty easily. 
Boxwood is a very light and you know, doesn't have a lot of character in it. This is just a little bit of oil so that we can see what this blank actually looks like. After we get past the surface on it. Remember this had a lot of layers of that copper and white and yet now we can see there's all these swirls and you know, the white's mainly here and the copper's mainly up here but there's a lot of swirls in the middle. So if I want to get the most out of this blank I may actually cut it down in this area uh, or if I want to show more of the white I could bring it down here. But I wouldn't have known that without turning it round first and bringing it down to a size closer to what the pen will finally look like. So, you know, we can now get a good approximation of what the finished product will be. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,